Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you to both of you for your service to our country and for your testimony here today. Uh, we live in what is perhaps the most complex, if not most dangerous threat environment this nation has had to deal with since World War II. Accurate intelligence assessments are crucial to our success in navigating these challenges. Uh, Director Haynes, your annual threat assessment points out the persistent threat of malign influence uh, uh, operations that are being conducted by Russia, China, and, and Iran. A host of our systems and platforms critical to our national security operate on the 3.1 to 3.45 gigahertz band of the spectrum or the lower 3G band. I know we're gonna get into the weeds a little bit on this, but I, I just wanna get for public understanding the seriousness of this particular issue. Are you aware of any or of the Chinese efforts to encourage other nations to build out their 5G infrastructure on the 3.1 to 3.45 gigahertz portion of the spectrum? Let me come back to you on that question, sir. Okay. Um, let me ask it this way. Are you aware of any Chinese campaigns to encourage U.S. companies to push the department, the Department of Defense, to auction off their share of the lower three B three three band, the lower three band of the uh, of the spectrum. I should come back to you just to be confident that I have it right, sir. Okay, I'll skip the rest of the questioning along that line till later. Okay. All right. Um, Director Haynes, based on the increasingly robust cooperation between. China, and Russia. Is it fair to assume that if either one of them engaged in Thank hostilities you. with the United States and our allies, that it would increase the likelihood that the other would also initiate some form of hostilities as well? Yeah, we see China and Russia, even for the first time, exercising together in relation to Taiwan and recognizing that this is a place where China did definitely wants Russia to be working with them, and we see no reason why they wouldn't. General Cruz, in your professional military opinion, is the department taking into consideration this increased cooperation between Russia and China when it comes to identifying joint force requirements? Uh, I think the department is uh, concerned, um, has been for a while, and then what we've seen over the last two years has um, caused the department to relook at its analysis and become even more concerned about what are our joint force requirements in an environment where, as discussed, uh, we would anticipate uh, even if uh, Russia and China and a military force are not interoperable, they would certainly be cooperative uh, and we would need to take that into account in force structure and planning. I'll just address this to both of you then. Um, have any of our plans been updated to reflect this no limits partnership between Russia and China? I think what I'd say is from a departmental perspective, um, our planning process is a multi-year process, uh, starting <coughs> with what the threat looks like and then how do we step through uh, a fairly intensive vetting of what kind of operations we might want to conduct. Uh, and we have, um, for the plans that you're probably most interested in, we are in the middle of that revision today. Director Haynes? Yeah, and I would say, I, I mean, we've produced quite a bit of analytic material, I think a lot of which you have read, that indicates this increasing cooperation in the No Limits Partnership, as you say, but just across really every sector of uh, society, political, economic, military, technological, and so on, and so that is something that, our understanding is prompting uh, new planning across the government in many respects. Bottom line is that, that basically if we were to have a conflict with one, the chances are we would have a second front and that the planning that we have to do includes confrontation on not just one front now, but the capabilities, the planning, the equipment, manpower that would be necessary uh, for two different fronts simultaneously. Am I correct? Yeah, I think um, certainly it's a possibility. I, it, the question of just how likely it is, I think, differs depending on the scenario, which I'm sure is obvious to you, but yeah. A greater possibility now than what it was two or three years ago, though. 
I think from the Department of Defense uh, perspective, that would certainly be the case. Uh, and it just has to be taken into account whether or not we actually believe uh, there would be two full upfronts. Uh, that is analysis and assessments that will mature over time. Uh, but certainly we have to take that into account into the planning as you have suggested. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Rounds. Uh, uh, Senator King, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I want to uh, uh, thank you, Director Haynes, for starting with an emphasis on cyber. Uh, 